Well, it won't be the first devolution since President Uhuru Kenyatta took office for his second and final term. And uh, the Big Four agenda is expected to take center stage. Affordable housing, health, infrastructure, or rather security, as well as manufacture. Well, as the county leadership takes stock of this system of governance, this is devolution, we also ask you tonight on our big question, has a devolution made any impact in the country? Has devolution made any impact in the country, even as the fifth devolution conference kicks off in Kakamega County? So much lined up for you, of course, even on a lighter note, on the devolution conference cup. You could probably stick around and see whether your governor or your senator helped their team win all these on Channel One prime time but first we take a look at the day's highlights feeling the weight of the flood trails of destruction that has rained to wreck havoc across the country taking stock of progress fifth devolution conference kicks off in Kakamega town and an African conference on education coming to Kenya. County to host a three days UNESCO forum on how to transform the sector. Welcome back. I am Rose Kaku and Susan Zuku is a sign language interpreter. And of course, the topic forming the basis of our bulletin tonight is matters devolution because it is yet another time for the country to take stock on the system of governance. How is it helping the country? What are the achievements? And in fact, or indeed, what are the challenges? So tonight, no big question tonight, just to remind you, we ask you, has devolution made any impact in the country kindly do interact with us on our social media platforms on twitter it's at kbc channel one or you could tweet me directly at rose underscore gaku well you can also send us a text beginning with where you are viewing us from 22126 right on your screens and on facebook it's kbc channel one let's begin the ongoing heavy rains across the country are causing poor sufferings to many with roads in most parts of the country washed away in Kitui County, new sub-county Deputy Commissioner James Wanyoike missed a death by a whisker after his car was swept away by the flash water as he tried to cross River Enzio. In Mandera, all roads have been rendered impassable and the town is submerged in water. This is Mandera County. The town is now submerged in water and all roads have been cut off as flash floods leaves a trail of destruction and hundreds stranded. Mandela East Member of Parliament Eden Ali is terming the situation a disaster and wants the government to step in and help repair the roads to enable humanitarian assistance reach hundreds who have been affected. We have problems uh, in many parts of the county, but specifically in uh, Mandela South constituency, the situation is dire. And if this situation uh, is not arrested in good time, we are staring it at a, a humanitarian disaster. <laughs> In Kitui, new Deputy County Commissioner James Wanyoike and his driver escaped death by a whisker after the vehicle they were traveling in was swept away by the raging floods. The duo almost drowned when they tried to cross the swollen river Enzio. The river has in the recent past claimed more than 10 lives owing to heavy downfall. Yeah, I was about to, to get out, but when I tried to get out, I, I slid. Mungi East Police Boss Paul Munene said that the two were lucky to have been rescued by Wanainchi. In Tana River, hundreds of homes have been marooned by the floods and after Tana River broke its banks. 32 villages have been affected and it's proving difficult to avail any assistance to those ring fenced by the flash waters. 
kuna changamoto ambazo zinatokea na kati yao ni kwamba e, uharibifu wa miundo msingi barabara zimeweza kuharibika na kuna sehemu ambazo hata gari haiwezi kubeba misaada ikaweza kufika Kenyans has now been warned to be on the lookout with the meteorological department indicating the country is not out of the woods yet Irene Mchuma Odin Channel 1 News Hour The Senate is formulating acceptable oversight mechanisms that will ensure a cordial working relationship between the Senate and the governors. This is part of a raft of measures being put in place to cut the hostility between the two institutions that largely dominated the first five years of devolution. This was revealed by Speaker of the Senate as he joined Senators, Governors and other leaders for the fifth devolution conference in Kakamega County. President Uhuru Kenyatta will officially open the devolution conference on Tuesday. The Senate has prioritized formulation of acceptable oversight mechanisms <laughs> <laughs> that will ensure it plays it is watchdog role at the county level but maintain a good working relationship with the governors to avoid unnecessary tensions between the two bodies that seem to dominate the working relationship between governors and senators in the first five years of devolution. That is one of the areas that we, we are working on now. You know, the first phase of uh, devolution, the first senators, first governors, I can say it was a learning curve. Mm -hmm. But now uh, we have learned from our mistakes. We don't want to duplicate work. We want to do work that is, is, um, is in supportive, complementary, mm -hmm. not competing, not, you know, undermining each other. In fact, we're saying when we do our oversight, it's not witch hunting, it's not fixing, flexing muscles, but it's just doing our responsibility. So I'm sure, like you can see and you will see, that this Senate is going to be completely different. It's a pro-devolution Senate. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've had uh, quite a number of fights between governors and senators, and uh, because of the fights, not much is done. But this time round, we want to have a working relationship. We want to be partners in uh, working for the people of our republic. We do not want uh, people to complain about uh, service delivery. Speaker of the Senate Assembly, Ken Lusaka, also revealed that the Senate will engage the electorate more by holding sessions outside Nairobi as it seeks to foster a good working relationship with the electorate as well as the governors. Yeah, we have one of the things that we have done and we're going to do is to take the Senate out of Nairobi. Our first sitting, like I'll be saying tomorrow, will be in Wasingishu somewhere in August. And we want really to go to the counties, we want to rotate in all the counties so that people can also feel the Senate. We want to go and see the projects that the, co the governors are undertaking on the ground because we... Every four minutes is a chance for you to win big with Mega Dollar. Just go to Lipa and Pesa, enter pay bill number 295888, account name KBC, and amount from 10 shillings or more. Then select your 10 numbers from 1 to 80 and send to 29588. You can win up to 30 million shillings. Start playing now and win. Mega Dollar. Big winners every four minutes. This week on KBC Channel One. I killed him! I killed him! Oh, oh, I killed my son! I came here to smack you across your face! I don't know if I'm here. I'm here. Where did you get my mother? Who did you find him? Zuri Sana? Nana Joni Pendi? This is absolutely nonsense! It's important you get support from your family and before you go to support groups. If I had met somebody at that time who encouraged me and told me, yes, look at me, I am fine, even you, you will be fine, it would have given me that much more uh, psych to fight. Shuru FM kwa shirikiano na KBC Radio Taifa wanakuletea Roadshow Babu Kubwa ndani ya Kiambu County tarehe 27 na 28 mwezi huu wa nne. Kutana na watangazaji wako wapendao wa Shuru FM, Nyox, Mwanamwede, Martin Kamade, Jose Bunjenga, KK na wengine wengi pamoja na watangazaji wako wa Radio Taifa, George Swaka.
Mtoni Musambi, Junior Dread na wengine wengi. Ijumaa tarehe na saba, tutazuru Githurai, Juja, Kenyatta Road, Gatondo, Igegania na Theka Theka. Nayo Jumamosi tarehe na nane mwezi wa nne, tutazuru Kikuyu Town, Kwambera, Githongori, Kiambu, Banana, Wangige, Hadili Muru. Jitokeze, uzawadiwe, uburudike na utumbuizwe na wasanita jika kama Joyce wa mama, Ngaroya Junior, Smart wa mam na Gathiaka Wanjeri. Ni Rocho ya Shoro FM na KBC Radio Taifa. Kwa udhami ni mkubwa wa Kamothe Housing Cooperative Society na MTBA kutoka Safaricom. Tuwaweza. Oja. Bless your sons and daughters. Big people music. Yeah. Expect the unexpected, but yeah. the very best. True, true. Keep it tough. You're my dear pretty. Mm -hmm. No fire and down your derive. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh, what a wonderful world it will be. Lege si ngo maya watu wa geto manzi. Yon do mentality watu wengi. Lege ni ngo maya kila mtu. We are the baddest, baddest, baddest. I'm the first guy who introduced like dance hall. I wanted people to respect mm -hmm. the border border. Bondanian the river. Naya Bingi will be chanting tonight. And every Wednesday night, catch us live. DJ Stano, Junior Ready, Big and Ready, live on KBC Channel 1 and KBC Radio Taifa. Daniel Kibini Netwaje. Welcome back. We also apologize for that technical hitch. And now to a story that now usher the interview tonight. The Senate is formulating acceptable oversight mechanisms that will ensure a cordial working relationship between the Senate and the governors. This is part of a raft of measures being put in place to cut the hostility between the two institutions that largely dominated the first five years of devolution. This was revealed by Speaker of the Senate as joined senators, governors, and other leaders for the fifth devolution conference in Kakamega County. President Uhuru Kenyatta will officially open the devolution conference on Tuesday. The Senate has prioritized formulation of acceptable oversight mechanisms <laughs> <laughs> that will ensure it plays it is watchdog role at the county level but maintain a good working relationship with the governors to avoid unnecessary tensions between the two bodies that seem to dominate the working relationship between governors and senators in the first five years of devolution. That is one of the areas that we, we are working on now. You know, the first phase of uh, devolution, the first senators, first governors, I can say it was a learning curve. But now uh, we have learned from our mistakes. We don't want to duplicate work. We want to do work that is, is, um, is in supportive, complementary, mm -hmm. not competing, not, you know, undermining each other. In fact, we're saying when we do our oversight, it's not witch handing, it's not fixing, flexing muscles, but it's just doing our responsibility. So I'm sure, like you can see and you will see, that this Senate is going to be completely different. It's a pro-devolution Senate. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've had uh, quite a number of fights between governors and senators, and uh, because of the fights, not much is done. But this time round, we want to have a working relationship. We want to be partners uh -huh. in uh, working for the people of our republic. We do not want uh, people to complain about uh, service delivery. Speaker of the Senate Assembly, Ken Lusaka, also revealed that the Senate will engage the electorate more by holding sessions outside Nairobi as it seeks to foster a good working relationship with the electorate as well as the governors. Yeah, we have one of the things that we have done and we're going to do is to take the Senate out of Nairobi. Our first sitting, like I'll be saying tomorrow, will be in Wasengishu somewhere in August. And we want really to go to the counties, we want to rotate in all the counties so that people can also feel the Senate. We want to go and see the projects that the, co the governors are undertaking on the ground because we, we are the ones who, are one of our, our, our responsibilities is to make sure that money goes to the counties. We want to follow and see how that money is being used. So apart from just sitting in the counties, we shall also be talking to Manainji, we shall be looking at the projects that they are working on. So we have a lot of things that we are working on to ensure that uh, we work together as a team. And the relevant laws that actualize devolution are there. It's only that we had a problem, the first Senate, 
never understood their function. But I'm happy with the Lusaka as now the speaker. And Lusaka being, having been a governor, he has now guided the Senate properly. So there will be no collusion, there will be no conflict, so long as each institu institution will follow the law as stipulated in the Constitution and other relevant laws. The Speaker spoke after his team was defeated by a spirited county assembly forum team to clinch the inaugural devolution conference cup. The friendly matches are part of the systems that are being put in place to enhance a good working relationship between the two bodies. This year's devolution conference will focus on the big four agenda as stipulated by the president after his inauguration. Uh, the discussions are bordering on um, the roles and responsibilities of the various arms of government. What is the role of the national government? What is the role of the counties? What is our expectation? What is it that we need to do on all, both our ends to ensure that that becomes a success? So that's really the agenda of the conference. We are very honored to have His Excellency the President opening tomorrow. The President will officially open the conference on Wednesday before Deputy President draws the curtain on the four-day event. Atola Simon, for Channel 1 News from Kakamega County. Many thanks, Achola Simon, for that comprehensive report. And of course, remember, this is a story that ashes our interview and, of course, forms the basis of our big question tonight. We ask you, has devolution made impact in the country? Has devolution made any impact in the country? Get us on our social media platforms as well as our SMS line, which is 22126, right on your screens. And well now, without further ado, we are joined by an expert who will be helping us understand this matter even better, Martin Mundati. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, I think we'll even start by asking you a big question tonight. Has devolution made any impact in the county, or rather in your county? Yeah, it has. Kakamaga is my county. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you're so fortunate to be hosting the devolution conference. Yes. <laughs> so right. th there, there are quite a number of things which have been done, but uh, more would have been done. If you look at uh, quite a number of programs, you see like the stadium, that is one of the flagship uh, pro projects we have done in Kakamega. It has been done by the county. It's not yet uh, complete because they, have done, they are doing it in phases. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can be proud of that. There are also a few roads which have been done in places where they will not have had tarmac. At least some of those places we are having tarmac. So you can say uh, at least it's working. But there are other, th there's also corruption which has, uh, you know, the governors learned the bad manners from the national government. So the corruption we are seeing at the national government has also been devolved. You find those funny behaviors uh, that are in the national government, you'll also find them in the county governments. Right. And in some of the places, there are times where we have not gotten value for money. Some of the things, if you look at the Auditor General's reports, some of the projects, uh, people, the governors have put on money. They actually white elephants and priorities. You see, like currently, Kakamega County is not giving uh, bursaries. And yet, uh, if you look at our poverty levels, it's very high. So you go to other counties like Vihiga, they are located 200 million. You go to Bungoma, which is neighboring, they are located 400. So why are we in Kakamega not uh, giving? You see, the argument by the governor has been that uh, education is a national uh, uh, government function. Right. But you know, uh, there are functions which are uh, devolved, and there are those which are uh, national, uh, which are uh, national government uh, functions. But you know, you, there are there are issues of public participation. When uh, you are identifying uh, the programs, you are supposed to make sure that uh, you involve the people. And there's money they allocate for that, you know? Mm -hmm. Public participation. Yeah, for public participation. Right. Most mm -hmm. of it which is uh, squandered mm -hmm. or stolen by the people who work in the counties. Because the people are supposed to come up and tell you what they need done with the money. Of, of course, with a little bit of guidance from uh, experts. But uh, that has not been very well done. Uh, and it's not just in Kakamega. You will get that, that problem is uh, happening right across uh, across uh, the country. Most, right. of the, most of the governors and uh, their teams, I think what, uh, what the pe they want the people to do. Of course, they also put a lot of money on projects where they, they know they'll make commissions. So you will get, uh, somebody knows if you give bursaries, there's no commission. So they don't see why you should give, uh, you should give uh, money to bursaries. But you see, devolution is actually taking power 
and the money closer to the masses. To so the closest is uh, the villages. Okay, just a question, just even from your conversation yeah. right there, and of course you've spoken about the county governments, you know, shifting them. The national government should be responsible for these functions. And of course this was cited by the CUG as some of the challenges they are facing because there's no specified functionality for these uh, subnational governments. Now, do you think there is n the, the, it lacks a clear cut of functions between the national government and the county government? No, the, the constitution is very clear on the functions of the national government, and uh, it's also very clear on the governments of the functions of the county government. And then it's also very clear on the functions which are shared. So, but you see, the, the, you see, like a function like health. Health is uh, almost fully devolved, apart from uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, Moi Referral, and Coast General. The rest of the hostels are uh, are uh, are uh, county government uh, run. Right. No? And but but uh, there has been a challenge. You saw when the government brought in uh, the issue of medical equipment, the one of leasing. They never involved the, gov the county government. It was a very noble concept. And uh, they were bringing in uh, services which were going to make the lives of the people better. Because you see, I saw I was watching on one of the channels, I think it was this one of yours, where they were talking about uh, th things like dialysis being done in Embu. Instead of somebody coming all the way, even in Isiolo. You see, there's a former MP whom they were interviewing, and he was saying he used to come all the way from Isiolo to Nairobi. And you see, that's very expensive. For dialysis. Yeah, for dialysis. But now, he, he spends just 200 bob to be able to get uh, dialysis in Isiolo. So, you see, the, the concept was very good. And, uh, so it was lack of communication. The communication, yeah, and uh, the consultation. Okay. Because uh, there should be consultation. And you see, some of the counties like uh, Kisi, when they were procuring the equipment, then they had already procured the same equipment. So you see, that leads to duplication. Mm. So you need, they should have sat with the county, the council of governors, and agreed, the council and uh, the national government agree that uh, you are helping us procure this equipment, but uh, they also tell you what their needs are. Because you bring in equipment, if they are not part of it, they resist. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you had raised a very pertinent issue right there, talking about some county governments not prioritizing what they do not think is beneficial to them as a government. In this case, how then would Mwaranchi participate in saying what should be done for them as a citizen? We need a lot of civic ed education. Y you know, most of the governors were still behaving like the MPs. You know, most of them were former MPs. So they will run the counties the way they run uh, CBA. But you know, the money on the, uh, that is going to the counties is a lot. For the last four years, the counties have received over a trillion bob. That is a lot of money, you know? But you know, the government, in fact, just decided, you know, inadequate resources as one of the main challenges in running revolution. But money has never been enough. Even here in this, uh, this station is government owned. Even <laughs> you at your personal level, Rose. Is money ever enough? So no, 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 nobody has uh, enough money. Wha what you do is uh, you work with what you have. The, the, the only thing, you know the Constitution provides that uh, they should get a minimum of 15. Currently they are getting close to 30% of the, the audited uh, accounts. Of course they keep on insisting it's 15%, which is a lie. It's not 15%, it's about 28%. But they need, when you look at the functions, and uh, those of us who understand a bit of statistics, you know that if they get 30, 35%, that should be adequate. And right. you know, counties are not supposed just to rely on national government. They are supposed to generate their own revenue. Well, actually, what, they are, what is supposed to happen, when you are allocated the money that is coming in from the national government, they are supposed now, that is supposed to form the basis on which you invest that money so that now you are able to generate so your right, own uh, revenues. Two, if you look at uh, most of those counties, in fact, all of them, including our own Nairobi here, you realize uh, when they were running as a county council, they are collecting more money. So what is it that uh, has gone wrong? Okay. Th there is no single county that is collecting more money than they were collecting uh, uh, when they were county, apart from Kiambu. Uh, oh. In Kiambu, during Kabogo's uh, time, he set up very good uh, structures, and uh, their revenue collection mechanisms were among the best. And of course, a bit of Machakos, but you know Machakos, uh, they increased the, the rates without uh, consulting the tra traders. Then of course, when it was going towards politics, they had to wait to create uh, political uh, mileage. Let's but talk about, sorry, continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 the resources will never be enough. What they need to do, let them work with what, is, what they are being given. But uh, there's also a lot of plethora. If you look at uh, the Auditor General's reports, there's so much wastage. 
So if we, we minimize some of that uh, wastage, then of course the governor's also of employed. You know, every other relative who didn't have a job, you find uh, the governors are employed there. Very the girlfriend who doesn't have a job, you put them there. The mistress. So all those things ended up, uh, they have over employed. And they know there are people who are sent in from uh, the national government. They, they are the people who are absorbed from the local authorities. So they didn't, you know, the argument has been that they started from scratch, which is a lie. Because the county governments were existing. We had the municipal council, we had the county council, we had the town councils. So they took up all those uh, structures, which had staff, which had uh, vehicles, which had buildings, and they were working. Then there is money which came in, which they were given through the transitional authority to, to improve on what they were, they were having. So the lie that uh, they started from scratch does not sell. Okay. The only thing is uh, there was also excitement. You know, what is supposed to have happened is the functions should have been controlled progressively so that uh, you release the functions as you release the money, as the counties build capacity. Okay. But you know, so the governors were excited because they wanted so much money. They knew if you have more functions, then you will have more money. So they insisted on most of the functions being devolved. When they were not ready, so you're saying the, the capacity was not ready? there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the capacity was not there. So they got so much of the functions being uh, devolved, yet they had not built capacity. But uh, you know, they also the national government, there are functions they don't want to let but go. Let's talk about now the national government, yeah. as you mentioned, and of course the big four agenda, which is expected to form the basis of this uh, conference, the fifth. And how do you think now the counties will assist in realization of this big four agenda? You know, like agriculture is fully devolved, and uh, that is one of the big four, food production, food security. So you cannot succeed without uh, working very closely with, uh, with the county governments. And you know, we need to revive extension, agricultural extension services. We need to subsidize uh, farming. I was watching uh, uh, one of the channels today, and uh, in, I think it's the Lake Ipia. The farmers are producing the tomatoes, but the tomatoes are rotting in the farms. So you see, that is a challenge, because if, if the farmers are going to produce, uh, we help them produce, we must also help them in terms of uh, storage, we must also help them to get to the markets. Because if they are going to produce and the food goes to waste, then it is, uh, doesn't serve the purpose. All right. Look at uh, maize. We keep on importing maize. Uh, then the money we spend on uh, the price we, do with we are paying uh, for importing maize is higher than what we are paying the farmers. We will pay our farmers 2300 then we import the same maize, a bag of maize, at, th at 3,800. You know, it doesn't make sense. Why don't we help this farmer uh, produce the maize? Then uh, we are able to also help him get to the market. So, right. so those are some of the, the disconnect and uh, the some of the issues that are creating uh, disconnect. And we need to look at them. Then there, are, there is a struggle between the, national, the county government and the national government over the issue of roads. You know, roads are very lucrative, and there are roads which are supposed to have been built. But because the national government knows there is a lot of money in those projects, and they know, guys know, there are kickbacks in those uh, projects, they don't want to release uh, to let So an issue those of uh, vested interest. Yes, in vested right. interest. Now, let's now talk about uh, the famous handshake, and uh, it seemingly have brought support to the administration from those areas viewed as opposition strongholds. Do you think this newfound unity is going to aid the devolution as well? It has created stability. You know, people are no longer on the streets. In fact, you guys are struggling to get news. So, <laughs> but uh, for purposes of uh, stability is good. The only issue is uh, we need to use that opportunity to look at our laws. And we need, uh, part of the tough was you saw Lusaka, the Speaker of Senate, saying that now they are going to work better with the Council of Governors. You remember in the last Senate, in the last uh, dispensation, th there was no clear distinct uh, role between the work of the MCS and the senators. You will find some, most of the senators, uh, when they realized there was a lot of money in the counties, you realize so many of them went and uh, ran for governor right. because they wanted the money. But you see, if the roles are clearly spelled out and uh, we, we train the leadership, we train the masses so that they know their roles. Then we will not have those tough words. Okay. And you know, when we were making the constitution in, uh, in uh, Naivasha, there was a problem. Because uh, the people who were there uh, didn't help this country. The Senate was supposed to be the upper house. You know, even in the US, the Senate is the upper house. But uh, what we did here is uh, we made the Senate like the provincial council of South Africa. So it's overshadowed by the National uh, Assembly. And uh, you've seen even there have been tough wars between uh, the MPs and the senators. 
All right. Then uh, the senators also have also been taking over some of the roles that are supposed to have been to be performed by the MCAs. Then the MCAs have also not understood their roles. You know, you see even up to now, most of the MCAs are still insisting. They want to perform executive functions. They can't. Because they want, uh, yeah, they want, uh, yeah, because you see, that's one of the issues, uh, like in Kakamega, my governor has had serious issues with MCAs, because the MCAs want the, want the World Fund. But you know, if you look at uh, the law critically, the way it is, there is no way the, MPs, uh, the MCAs are supposed to have the World Fund, because uh, right. the functions which are supposed to be done by the World Fund are an executive function. It's just like CDF. You see, and you remember the court declaring that CDF was unconstitutional. Of course, the MPs looked around and... Uh, manipulated the law to have it uh, back. But uh, if we are to follow the law per se, then the MCAs are supposed to provide a very robust oversight to the governor, and they, they, they are involved in budget making. So you know you cannot complain that your area is not getting money. Because oh, you I are the ones who make the budget making process, you are the ones who allocate the money. So you cannot say that the governor is not giving you award money. The only thing is uh, that you are supposed to do is to make sure as an MC in that particular area, when the money comes, you provide oversight and make sure that that money is well utilized by the, the people who are the executive, which is the governor and his team. All right, then. And of course, uh, maybe in your final words, yeah. because now, in the interest of time, barely in one sentence, where do you see Kenya in 20 years in, with the assistance of devolution? A very good concept. We need to tinker a bit with the Constitution, address issues like health, because, you know, like health, we need to have a health, uh, National Health Service Commission, which will address the uh, HR functions of uh, the medics. But uh, you have the rest of the functions being done by the counties. That is, uh, in fact, this is what we should have had in 1963. And, you know, that's what Kari was propo proposing, the Majimbo system. All right. But uh, people thought Majimbo was now locking. The guys who come from Kiambu should not be allowed to go to Nairobi. But that was not the thinking. The thinking was that you have people in the grassroots taking control of the resources, and they decide what is good for them. And uh, the only other issue that uh, has not been uh, fully addressed is the equalization fund. You know, the national government has not uh, released money for the equalization fund, and uh, the senators are sleeping on the job. We expect them to push so that the government, because it's, it's, it's constitutional, they release that money so that the counties which were disadvantaged are able to get the money to try and catch up with the rest of the, ca the people. But right. devolution by and large is working. We'll uh, give it 60 percent but we percent. need to to strengthen uh, the institutions and put in more safeguard and hold the governors and the rest of the institutions to account all right then and of course right there political analyst martin and that is even graded governance giving it 60 percent as its score and of course remember the devolution conference seeks to, to do exactly that it's a similar kind and of course uh, martin and Dati at the same time just talking about the need for each function or uh, uh, government to understand what their role is in governance. Well, we ended at that, but remember the updates on this uh, conference will be on our social media platforms and on our website on www.kbc.co.ke as well as our other social media platforms. Always check for by the minute update. Members of the public have pointed out four suspected members of the outlawed Al-Shabaab gang uh, to security agents in Wajir County. The four suspects, Ahmed Dabar, Kuko Yaro Abdi, also known as Kuno Kuso, Yaro, Mohammed Ahmed Yaro, also known as Mohammed Kuso, Yaro, and Adam Yusuf Sheikh, are said to be behind the terror activity in the county and have been spying on communication masts and any other vulnerable installations to attack. The involvement of the public in the war against terrorism is bearing fruit, more so in the secretive and volatile northeastern region, with at least four notorious Al Shabaab sympathizers being pursued by security agents following a tip off by the public. Locals in Wajir have volunteered information on the four individuals whom they accuse of being behind radicalization of youths in the area and coordinating terrorism activities for Al-Shabaab terror group. According to the police, the four suspects, Hamed Dabar, Kuro Yaro Abdi, alias Kulo Kuso Yaro, Mohammed Hamed Yaro, alias Mohammed Kuso Yaro, and Adan Yusuf Sheikh, 
have been spying on movements of security personnel and passing the information on to the Al-Shabaab militants. They are also alleged to be behind surveillance on communication masts and in other vulnerable installations for attacks. The four, according to the security agents, are also part of a recruitment cell that targets disillusioned youth, radicalizing them and facilitating them to travel to Somalia for training and thereafter return to carry out attacks in the country. Police now say they are on the trail of the four whom they suspect might have crossed over to Somalia to avoid arrest. Samson Kitavi, Channel One News. Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi has warned that police will deal ruthlessly with emerging criminal gangs threatening security and order in the country. Matiangi made the announcement as police are weighing the number of youth in Mombasa believed to be part of a criminal gang terrorizing locals mostly at night. Oh, wow. This video making rounds on social media has raised concerns of possible reemergence of criminal gangs in the country at a time the nation is picking up its pieces after the long electioneering period that almost grounded the economy. Residents in the coastal region, considered a tourist hub, were recently put up by the video showing a group of youth armed with machetes and other crude weapons rehearsing for a possible attack. Based on the video, a number of youth are in police custody with the Coast Regional Police Commander, John Stoney Parra, warning that police will deal ruthlessly with anybody trying to break law and order. The two imaginary groups, one lives in Majengo and the second one lives in Kibokoni. These are younger men. And those groups people are referring to are groups that they formed up so that they can assist each other. But some of them, with the ill intentive, have decided to transform themselves into criminal gangs. They Already two young men have been charged by a Mombasa magistrate court of bearing weapons with the intent to commit a felony. The two denied charges levelled against them and were each released on a 15,000 shillings bond. In the meantime, Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi is warning that the government will not tolerate such criminal elements. Speaking at Nyakembene in South Mugirango, Matiangi called for community partnership with state security agencies in fighting the emerging crime wave. Maneno ambayo yalitendeka hapa chusu tuneka. Na nimesikia visa mbili ama tatu hivi uhalifu kidogo kidogo kikundi hapa kikundi kule. Sisi kama serikali ni yetu ni kwamba sasa tuwe na amani tuweke amani katika kila sehemu ya jamhuri yetu tukufu ya Kenya. The CS citing an incident where the gangs had abducted and killed a female pastor in Bonchari constituency warned that anybody threatening national security will meet the full force of the law. Kenya this week will host the Pan-African Conference on Education as stakeholders in the continent take stock of triumphs and challenges facing the sector. A three-day conference organized by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, the Kenyan government, in collaboration with the African Union, brings together hundreds of participants, among them 53 ministers of education from African countries. The meeting coming in the wake of a lengthy industrial strike by lecturers who have vowed to stay away from work until their CBA is signed and implemented. Under the theme Bridging Continental and Global Education Frameworks for the Africa We Want, African education ministers are converging in Nairobi to find ways of injecting new impetus in the sector. Over the last two years, the Kenyan education sector has gone through various reforms that have had great impact on the sector. This week, the government will be looking to build on these successes as education stakeholders from the continent gather in Nairobi to discuss matters pertaining to education. We realized that uh, we needed to come together uh, frequently to just assess where we are, to take stock of how much we've implemented, uh, both the SDG 4, uh, but also uh, CESA, uh, in order to continue participating in the conversations around the world on, uh, on education. 
Education Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Mina Mohammed underpinning Kenya's intention to use the high level engagement to push for equal rights in the education sector. Without a strong foundation in education, nothing else actually happens in any country. So for us to develop and to develop sustainably, we must make sure that we make the right investment, we build the right capacity uh, for our education sectors across the, across the continent. The conference will identify challenges and opportunities in the further alignment of educational systems in view of ensuring transformative education for Africa. The conference, however, comes at a time lecturers have turned their backs on lecture halls, demanding the implementation of the 2017-2021 Collective Bargaining Agreement. I can tell you, uh, standing here, that we are doing everything possible to make sure that uh, we bring this to a close. Uh, as soon as possible. Tuka University Vice Chancellor Professor Erastus Njoka calling on striking lecturers to give dialogue a chance. While uh, union now I see this order to get it in to squeeze the villa in a uh, in a ambiwa. If these youth are not educated. Meanwhile, a youth forum will be held in Nairobi on Tuesday to take stock of the successes achieved by young people in the education sector. We will make space for them so that during the technical meetings and during the conference of ministers, which will take place on Friday, they will have a space to present their recommendations and their conclusions, and they will hopefully be taken into account in the final conclusions of the ministers. Roland Engier, regional director of Plan International, said the conference will provide recommendations for broad engagement of young people in education reforms and research in Africa. For Channel One News Hour, I am Edward Kabasa. The public has been asked to come out in large numbers for the two memorial services to be held this week for the late Kenneth Matiba. On Wednesday, the first memorial service for the late veteran politician will be held at the All Saints Cathedral in Nairobi with the second service scheduled on Thursday at the Hora Stadium in Moranga County. story that will be telling us and just indicating to us how the farewell of the political veteran will be carried out. We take that short break. Kindly do not go too far and please do not forget to keep sharing your feedback on our big question tonight where we ask you, has devolution made any impact in your county? Has devolution made any impact on your county? The number is right on your screens, 22162, as well as on our social media platforms that break. Mega dollar. Liko ni na watch show, alafu kuna ile number special, kumi, silipeanu mapali. Alafu badai ni katangazo kuwa, mimi ndo mshindi. Na aso laba mtani, ni kuandaka kiosk yangu pale. Yanya ni mashinda, nda boost ile kiosk yangu, iko kubwa kidogo, na wasi mcheze. Now we be a Cheza Ushinde Leo. Top up kwa pay bill number 295 8 Sasa. Shuru FM kwa shirikiano na KBC Radio Taifa. Wanakuletea Roadshow Babu Kubwa Dania ya Kiambu County. Tare 27 na 28 mwezi huu wa Kutana na watangazaji wako wapendao wa Shoro FM. Nyox, Mwana Mwede, Martin Kamade, Jose Bunjenga, KK na wengine wengi. Pamoja na watangazaji wako wa Radio Taifa, George Swaka, Boni Musambi, Junior Dread na wengine wengi. Ijuma tarehe 27 tutazuru Githurai, Juja, Kenyatta Road, Gatondo, Igegania na Theka Theka. Nayo Juma Mosi tarehe 28 mwezi wa 4 tutazuru Kikuyu Town, Kwambera, Gidongori, Kiambu, Banana, Wangige, Hadili Muru. Jitokeze, uzawadiwe, uburudike na utumbuizwe na wasanita jika kama Joyce wa Mama, Ngaroya Junior, Smart wa Mam na Gadhiaka Wanjeri. Ni Rocho ya Shoro FM na KBC Radio Taifa kwa udhamini ni mkubwa wa Kamothe Housing Cooperative Society na MTBA kutoka Safaricom. Tuwaweza.
calm yourself down, Karina. I have something very important to say to you. Well, I have got nothing that I want to say to you. I have an opportunity to hang on to the ranch. I've got a part of the ranch on a contract, and it will be mine after Elena is dead. Eduardo, I can say definitely that you are the father of that boy. Welcome back and thank you so much for your company. We retake that story on the update on the veteran politician Kenneth Matiba burial arrangement. The public has been urged to come out in large numbers for the two memorial services to be held this week for the late Kenneth Matiba. On Wednesday, the first memorial service for the late veteran will be held at the All Saints Cathedral in Nairobi, with the second service scheduled on Thursday at the Hora Stadium in Muranga County. We shall be having uh, a service at uh, All Saints Cathedral on Wednesday uh, morning at 10.30. Uh, and then the following day on Thursday, we have uh, a funeral service in Moranga at Ihora Stadium. Uh, I can say we are here in a very free environment in a free democratic environment, uh, mainly because of the late Kenneth Matiba and his colleagues in terms of what is called now the second liberation. And so it is befitting for us as a country to commit to ourselves uh, to make sure that we actually give him this uh, special send off. The Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission has refuted claims that its chairman, Bofuna Chebukati, had resigned, saying the notice circulating on social media is fake. On its Twitter account, the electoral body dismissed the letter dated April 23rd and bearing the commission's logo, saying it's not genuine and did not originate from the electoral body. The Electoral and Boundaries Commission took to its Twitter account to dismiss the letter dated April 23rd and bearing the commission's logo, stating that IEBC chairman Wafula Chebukati had rendered his resignation as fake. IEBC says the letter addressed to President Uhuru Kenyatta is not genuine and did not originate from the electoral body. But as the electoral body tries to fight the so-called fake news, pressure is still mounting on its chair Wafula Chebukati to resign. The latest coming from the evangelical churches who urge the remaining commissioners in IEBC to quit and pave way for reforms. You know in a, in a commission there is nobody who is permanent. And the will is very important. If you don't have the will, you cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot perform. So there's got to be the will. So I think it is healthy when uh, people feel that I can, I can, I can pull down. You know, one of the problems we have in Kenya is the problem of permanency. That when somebody is appointed, we feel this one is permanent, this is the one who is going to bring all the solutions. Similar sentiments coming from Machako's legislator, Dr. Victor Munyaka, who says time was up for the commissioners. As leaders, we are going to advo advocate and we are going to support what most Kenyans are actually expressing. That the current commission, the way it is, needs to be dissolved. And a fresh commission with a fresh mandate and the confidence from Wanainji needs to be created. Chebukati has since ruled out resigning. Beatrice Gatonyang Etich, Channel One, News Hour.
mzima wanjo madongo miru koreko bunda ile show kubwa east africa top masha wiki just swing the alarm i miss a ring it ring it ring it like so top masha wiki uzuri wangu ibeyali au pati kiutani uzuri wangu nyumbani ananipa burudani watu wamefikiria maovu zaidi kuliko mema na mtu anapoonekana anapenda mema basi huonekana ni mtu ambao kwamba ameshatikwa na wakati do apologize for that technical hitch. Now we take it again where the Kenyan shilling continued with its strengthening streak against the American dollar as the greenback continues to weaken. The shilling opened trading today on a stronger note exchanging at 100 shillings and 5 cents against the US dollar and 140 for the UK pound. The central bank says the shilling is boosted by improved import cover and inflows from the agriculture sector a strong shilling is good for importers, while exporters prefer a weak shilling. The Kenya shilling strengthened against major international and regional currencies last week, according to data from the Central Bank of Kenya. The shilling gained against the US dollar supported by inflows from the agricultural sector and offshore investors. It also strengthened against the euro and the Japanese yen, but weakened against the sterling pound. In the East African Community region, the shilling strengthened against all three currencies. The Kenyan unit opened the trading week today, quoting at 100.05 against the United States dollar, which has been on a losing streak due to trade tensions with China and a widening trade deficit. Official data shows that Diaspora remittances jumped by nearly one and a half in February to hit a new monthly high of 21.25 billion shillings. The CBK weekly report indicates that the official import cover remains a record high at 9.5 billion US dollars, which can cover the country's import for six and a half months. The shilling is also enjoying relative calm due to serenity within the political space after an elongated electioneering period. The county government of Kitu is set to supply over 200,000 farmers with an upgraded pesticide meant to contain the spread of the vicious fall armyworm that has destroyed thousands of crops in the area. The initiative targeting green drum farmers in the region will see each farmer receive 10 bottles of 400 ml of the pesticide in order to ensure that farmers reap maximum benefit from their harvest this season. Here is that story. Farmers from across the country and especially in maize producing regions have been grappling with the full army worm menace which started as a simple seemingly manageable condition but has since escalated to unmanageable levels. And though a range of initiatives have been taken by the government to fight the worm's invasion, none has so far been effective. To this end, the county government of Kitui has set aside 15 million shillings to supply over 200,000 farmers with an upgraded pesticide meant to contain the spread of the vicious worm that has destroyed thousands of crops in the area. Uh, we are kicking, off, kicking the distribution uh, uh, today and the spraying, and we hope in the next one and a half weeks we'll, our farmers will have sprayed and uh, the crop will, will continue to grow up to maturity. The initiative targeting green gram farmers in the region will see each farmer receive 10 bottles of 400 ml of the pesticide to ensure that they reap maximum benefits from their harvest this season. We are giving uh, one, 100 millimeters of uh, pesticides per farmer 
and we are targeting 40,000 uh, farmers who are going to get uh, these uh, products uh, across our eight counties. The county CEC in the Ministry of Water, Agriculture and Irrigation, Emmanuel Kisangao, says the past, if not controlled early enough, will lead to reduction in crop yield. He further noted that the county government is engaging with other international markets to provide linkages for green gram of farmers. We are not uh, stopping at uh, spraying. We have also started engaging with the, with the buyers. And uh, today we hosted uh, one, of our, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, processors and exporters, uh, grain bulk uh, handlers, who are willing and uh, uh, looking into entering into a partnership with our county so that they can buy, buy all our green gram. Vile mvua inaendelea kunyesha vizuri, county government imetuahidi ya kwamba itatutafutia soko na tukifuna ndengu sasa itakuwa inatupatia tukipata soko tutakuwa tunauza kwa bei mzuri na inatupatia mavuno mazuri na tunapata dhamana yake. Well, now a crossover to the energy sector where energy experts from Comesa, EAC, SADAC and Indian Ocean Commission are set to hold a meeting this week to review the implementation of the project on enhancement of a sustainable region energy market in the Eastern Africa, Southern Africa, Indian Ocean region. The project seeks to, among others, address market governance and regulatory related challenges affecting the implementation of the energy development projects in the region. The project on enhancement of sustainable regional energy markets aims at addressing market governance and regulatory related challenges affecting the implementation of energy development projects in the Eastern Africa, Southern Africa and Indian Ocean region. Among key areas of focus is a regionally harmonized energy regulatory framework adopted by regional and national regulatory institutions with particular emphasis on cross-border issues to encourage investments in the region as well as the enhancement of regulatory capacity of the national regulatory authority and strengthening capacity of the regional associations and power pools to proactively influence developments in the energy sector. The committee will also deliberate on the enhancement of the development of renewable energy and energy efficiency strategy, policies and regulatory guidelines to attract investment 